On March 25th, 2016, Brenda Brown called 911 from her niece's home in Smyrna, Tennessee, telling the dispatcher she needed immediate police assistance. 911 emergency. Yes, this is When officers arrived at the scene, they discovered the body of Kim Allen, who police estimated had been dead for several days based on her skin marbling. They also noticed superficial cuts on her neck and bleeding from her eyes, which indicated Kim might have been smothered or suffocated. While there did not appear to be any sign of a struggle, the back door window had been broken from the inside out, leading investigators to believe that the assailant wanted to make the murder look like a robbery gone wrong. Although her purse and wallet were still in the house, there was no cash inside either of them. Neighbours reported seeing an unknown man coming and going from Kim's home throughout the week in a taxi. To gather more information about this mystery man, investigators searched for Kim's banking and cell phone information. Five days before her body was found on March 20, 2016, surveillance footage captured Kim withdrawing $420 from her account. Also, video from earlier in the day showed a man using her card at a convenience store to buy beer and a cigarette. Cell phone records showed that the last call from her number was on the evening of March 21st to a woman named Stacy Merritt. Detectives contacted Merritt, who told them that her brother, Eric Ellis, had called her from Kim's phone. They had also identified the man in the surveillance footage as Eric, saying he had met Kim at a local bar and that Kim had offered him a place to stay while he got back on his feet. Eric told his sister that he had witnessed something horrible the previous week but could not disclose any detail about what had happened. Merritt said that she took her brother to the rescue mission in Nashville where investigators quickly tracked him down. Eric Ellis was brought into the station for an interview. I haven't known her that long. She was pretty cool, nice person. Mm -hmm. She opened up to me and I opened up to her. She had been real nervous. Um, she just kept mentioning Larry. She had told me some prior incidents where she was at a bar where he turned up by the back of her hair. He was screaming that I'll kill us both. I don't know if he physically did anything to her recently or she's had a run into him. Let me, let me clarify again real quick just what I want, okay? okay. From, from Friday night from the time you met up with Cam, okay? okay. Uh, through today when you talked to us. Oh, okay. Okay. Friday night, definitely drinking. I know we went back to her place. Okay. I went to sleep on the couch because that's normally where I slept at. Uh, Saturday, we did, we've been to Nashville. We bar hopped a little bit. She did say that she was going to meet up with a friend of hers that she knew for a while. Um, I know it was a, a guy, but I don't know his name. Never got it. I left from her and was just roaming around all night. So I figured she did meet up with the, like, whoever she was talking about. And I haven't seen her since. After that, all of that. She probably did meet up with that person. Okay. And they either stayed downtown or they went back to their place. Okay, so Saturday night you didn't come back to her place at all? No. She stayed in Nashville. No, sir. Eric had just told his first big lie that the detectives know to be false. He said that he left on the Saturday and didn't come back to her place. But the detectives have spotted him using her card in the supermarket the next day. They would now inform him of this lie and you see him physically crumble under the pressure. So you haven't seen her since Saturday? So, how were you in her car in Smyrna at 11 or 9 a.m. on Sunday? On Sunday? Mm hmm I don't recall being in her car on Sunday. You recall going to the store and using her credit card? Yes, we, that's when I told you when she, um, yes, on I'm Sunday. Sorry. Yes, sorry. Um, that's when, um, I came back down here for a little bit and then I, um, yeah, I remember that. I forgot about that and I'm sorry. I'm not to you. A little freaked out because one, I didn't do nothing wrong. Right now, you're telling me a lot of... I know, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to remember everything. Now, if something happened, you were at the house, and a mistake happened, then that's what we need to know. We can deal with, with mistakes. If somebody's going to lie to us about it, nah, nah. that tells us that somebody's trying to hide something. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Okay, yeah. There was a screen battle. Um, it was a guy named Carl. I want to say it was Miller. Carl Miller. I know Larry didn't do anything. 
I don't know how she knows him. Um, they were just screaming yelling at each other. Like, Sunday, Monday morning, like early morning. He just told me, get the f out of there. I called the taxi and I kind of left. The detectives searched for a Carl Miller living in the area in their database and nothing came up. As you have probably guessed, Carl Miller does not exist. He's merely a character Eric has made up in order not to expose or incriminate himself, essentially telling the events of the story but in third person. Many suspects actually do this when being interviewed as a coping mechanism, allowing them to confess to their crimes but not feel guilty saying it out loud. I knew something, probably something bad had happened, but I didn't know what. Okay. I'm going to ask you this one time, okay. and I want you to be perfectly honest with me. When you saw her Monday, before you left there, was she alive? Um, Don't lie to me either. I know she was drugged up. He was crushing some type of pills. I seen the residue on the counter. Uh, I watched her, him, put the powder in the cup. Okay. And then I watched him put Diet Dr. Pepper on top of it. I got scared. I called the taxi. How'd you call the taxi? Um, she had given me her cell phone to hold on to. Okay. So what'd you do with her phone? I um, I got after I got rid of it because I didn't know what the hell was going on. Well, I gotta be honest with you. I still still bug me that you take her phone and just just decide to throw it away because if you don't know that she's dead. You're not going to take your friend's phone and throw it in the trash because she's going to want her phone back. I threw it away in the trash can. Where? Downtown. At that time, honestly, truthfully, speaking truthfully to you, I didn't know she was dead then. When a suspect repeats certain phrases like I wouldn't lie to you and words like honestly or truthfully, detectives usually take this as a sign that they are lying. <clears throat> Sometimes something happens. Some things are accidents, okay? If you were there, you were having sex, you were getting drunk, you were getting stoned, she died, then that's what we need to know, okay? I just knew that he told me I need to f***ing leave, and I left. Okay. I Honestly, that's what I did, Okay. And I left. I'm gonna try this one more time, okay? And I'm gonna give you a chance to be honest with me, okay? This third person bullshit is bullshit. That's all it is, bullshit. There is no car Miller in Smyrna or Rutherford County. You're gonna have to start being honest with me. I'm being honest right now. No, you're not. You keep blowing. You keep blowing smoke at my butt. I'm being honest with you. I'm freaking out because I did not kill this woman. I did poison this woman. I didn't do shit. You and her, the only two in the house at that time. At that time, yes. Okay. So you were there Sunday night, correct? To your ass. Okay. Whose picture are we gonna see at the ATM at night that that night? On which night? Sunday night. Sunday night. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you. She went to the ATM and got the cash out. I think it was like $420 or something like this. I was with her and she went to the bank. What were you holding to her neck? Oh, oh nothing. At the back. Oh, that's, um, yeah, she, that's what she had. I would hold it. Come on, come on. I have a life. Nobody has said anything about a knife. And yet Eric has bought it up all by himself. This slip up is most likely a recollection of what actually happened. His story is falling apart by the minute. Okay, you want to try this again? She asked me. I didn't cut her. She asked me to hold it. And I did. She asked you to hold what? She gave me a knife. Okay. Did she tell you to hold it up to her neck? I didn't hold it to her neck. I just kind of held it like this. She said, I'm going to lend you $40. And she took out 420 and I didn't need 400 So you took $420 from her. Let me tell you something, okay? Right now, you're blowing this book who spoke up my ass, okay? Now, if you want to keep this story up, we can play all night long. But we all know what happened, don't we? Honestly, the truth, I was so felt drunk, I don't even remember. There was a struggle when we got back. Not like a fight. So between you and her? She was stumbling. And I went to catch her when I did, and it stuck in. And I freaked the out. What'd you do with the knife? I threw it away. Where? downtown where in the parking garage after she fell on it i got a towel to hold it right there and i said kim i'm so sorry i said i, I don't know what, what the hell i'm thinking and that's and i don't remember a whole lot because i had to like out no i'd like to say that yeah i did and i know i'm going to jail all right eric is already telling them bits and pieces of information 
The detectives know that he didn't accidentally stab her with a knife while trying to help her. They needed to get a real confession. So they sent him to his jail cell for the night, with the hopes of continuing the rest of the interrogation the next day. But on the same day, before going to sleep, Eric requested to talk to a detective again to get things out of his chest. Oh, I don't doubt they won't be lost. I don't doubt they won't be okay. And I can see in your eyes, you're, you love your family. You love your sister. Much. And I bet you five dollars right now that you're ashamed, and, and you, you, you're ashamed about bringing this upon him, aren't you? Right? Yes. Okay. Let me take you something. There's an old saying: truth will set you free. Oh man, I'm not about to drunk ass motherfucker. This and this and that. For some damn reason, I'm in the kitchen, and I'm gonna be like, I don't know why. Can I just touch your neck and change it? And I slap down your neck, and I realized what I was doing somehow helped. I dropped her, and she asked me to give her some of this and help her. So I gave her way too much. Did you crush it up and put it in a drink? Yeah, I thought that it would help ease the pain. And then she passed away. Just a couple questions. Um, what'd you do with the duct tape? What'd you use the duct tape for? I found her hands. Is she dead when you put the duct tape on? I did that after her. She had passed away. She had duct tape on her hands. What else did you put in that hands? No. You put it across her mouth? And I think I did on her eyes. Do you put it across my nose? I don't want to say this. I'm going to ask you the hardest question I've ever going to ask a person. Okay? Yes. So this is a you to me. Okay? And I just want you to give me a plain, straight up, honest answer. Yes, sir. Did you choke her? I didn't choke her with half of those eye products. She was already gone. And I wanted to make it fucking break it. I put the paper on her neck to her the bag. Um, put a bag over her head. And then you put duct tape around the neck. And she was on the bottom. Okay. How did you know she passed away? She was making some type of noise. It sounded like a snore almost. I just snapped. Okay. Um, but I didn't know what I was, what I was doing until afterwards. Okay. Let me clear for just a little bit, okay? I think you're ashamed of what happened at the bank. Very much. But what happened is what happened at the bank kind of led to the rest of the evening. Yes, sir. Am I pretty close with that? Yes, no, you're not close. You're not close. You crushed the pills. Put them in a cup. She drank some more. She started to get sleepy. You carry her to the bed. You went back into the living room. And then she was making those noises. You went back into the bedroom. Put a plastic bag over her head. And then duct tape the plastic bag. I feel very bad. Oh, I do. I know you. I know you. I really do. I know you don't understand. I feel really bad. I, I can I'm see. Fine. I can see it in your eyes, okay? It's okay. It's all right. All right. Let's come on back in here. We'll do what we got to do. All right. An acquaintance of Alan, Eric Ellis, allegedly murdered the 45-year-old at her home on Brad's Trail in Smyrna back in March. Police tell News 2 he apparently confessed to the crime. The most disturbing part of this case is that Eric continued to live in Kim's home after murdering her, sleeping on the sofa for days whilst her body was slowly decomposing upstairs in her room. If Kim's aunt Brenda didn't come to check on her, and discover her body, Eric would most likely be still living with a corpse. Eric pleaded guilty for the murder of Kim Allen and is now serving a life sentence with the possibility of parole.